filthy secrets of the most powerful rulers in history. Power corrupts, but absolute power corrupts absolutely. Through the course of history, the world has witnessed leaders renowned for their evil and inhumane acts, like Hitler's Holocaust and Vlad's impaling, amongst others. In today's video, we would be looking at the filthy secrets of the most powerful rulers in history that made them so terrifying. Watch this video to the end, as you would be amazed at the extent to which these rulers dehumanize those who went against them. Before we begin, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Without further ado, let's begin. Vlad the Impaler Vlad III Dracula, more commonly referred to as Vlad the Impaler, was a ruthless 15th century ruler of Wallachia, which is now part of Romania. He became well known for using torture, mutilation and mass murder regularly. This ruthless ruler was lauded for his tactical endeavors, and yet his unequaled brutality and inclination for primitive executions, frequently against his skin, added to his standing as one of history's most cutthroat pioneers. This embalmment, beheading and even being skinned or boiled alive are all said to have been used to kill Vlad's victims. However, Vlad earned the name Impaler, because that was his favorite way of dealing with his enemies. Impalement is a horrifying procedure in which a wooden stake is slowly driven through the victim's body before they are left to die of exposure. The man got so busy with this sport, history has it that he impaled around 20,000 men on the Danube banks after a famous military victory against the advancing Ottoman Turks. The grotesque forest of corpses is said to have prompted the second wave of invaders to immediately retreat upon seeing it. Some stories say that Vlad liked to eat among the thousands of impaled bodies and would even dip his bread in their blood. The bizarre practice, along with Vlad's birthplace of Transylvania and the name Dracula, served as inspiration of the vampire and Bram Stoker's 1897 novel Dracula. Caligula, Emperor of Rome, AD 12-41 Caligula's lavish projects, sadism and eccentricity earned him the title of the cruelest Roman emperor, surpassing even his nephew Nero. He once had his military developed a two-mile drifting scaffold, so he could jog along to it on his pony. He instructed his troops to plunder the sea by collecting shells in their helmets in another episode. It is said that Caligula, who was tall and covered in hair, forbade people from talking about goats to him, but he did facial contortions to scare his subjects more. He constructed an extravagant house for his pony in Cetitus and endured to designate the horse to the high office of the diplomat. However, he was killed before he could finish the advancement. Elizabeth Bathory If you think only men tend to be cruel leaders, think again. Elizabeth Bathory was a Hungarian noblewoman who was referred to as the Blood Countess. She is widely regarded as being the most cruel female serial killer in history. Bathory is said to have lured young peasants to her castle in the late 16th and early 17th century with promises of high-paying jobs as servants. These people were tortured beyond description once they were confined to the citadel. While others were stripped and left to freeze in the snow, others were beaten and stabbed with needles. Bathory, according to legend, bathed in the blood of her virgin victims because she believed it would maintain her youthful glow. Bathory purportedly slaughtered over 80 peasant young ladies. However, the number might be just about as high as 600, 
Yet it was just when she directed her attention towards youthful aristocrats that she was finally stopped. She was bricked inside the chambers of her castle in 1611, with only a small opening for food. She would pass away four years later in 1614. Since then, some historians have contended that political foes conspired against Bathory. While this guarantee is questioned, there is little uncertainty that her standing has become completely entwined with fantasy and legend. She is said to have been one of the historical influences on Bram Stroke's novel Dracula, along with Vlad the Impaler. The Shengde Emperor of China one of the most infamous rulers of the Ming dynasty was known for both his ignorance and his cruelty. He enjoyed giving orders to an imaginary double, he referred to as General Su Shou, and enjoyed leading unpredictable military expeditions. He foolishly appointed Liu Jin, a senior eunuch, to oversee the majority of state business during his first five years in power. Five years after their disagreement, the emperor ordered Liu's three-day slow-slicing execution. Liu died on day two. Ming-era books, for example, The Shengde Emperor Roams Through Jiangnan, cast the emperor as silly and gullible, but excessively cruel and undiplomatic. Ivan the Terrible Ivan IV Vasilyevich was born Ivan the Terrible. Ivan served as the Grand Prince of Moscow from 1533 to 1547. He also served as the Tsar of all Russia until he died in 1584. He became convinced that his enemies had poisoned Anastasia, his wife, when she died in 1560. Because of this, his paranoia and mental instability got worse, and he was driven to torture and kill anyone he thought was a political rival. However, this cruel and heartbroken ruler did not stop there. He went on to establish a personal bodyguard organization, the dreaded Oprichnina. Through this, he applied all-out control as much as 33% of the Muscovite domains. They ransacked churches, murdered priests, set government officials on fire and drowned their families in the river. Brokers and vendors had their merchandise seized and their stores annihilated and were frequently killed. He took great pleasure in bringing members of the nobility to heel through his sadistic and cruel executions. Ivan tried to resign in 1564 because he was sick of the rules but he was convinced to come back a year later. In a fit of rage, Ivan killed his own son and heir in 1581 by striking him with a pointed staff. However, despite his flaws, Ivan's terribleness made him one of the most revered Tsars in Russian history. Rudolf II, Holy Roman Emperor Rudolf II was one of the most eccentric rulers of the European Renaissance. He was also one of the greatest collectors of his time and big supporter of the arts, science and pseudoscience. There were a lot of animals in Prague Castle, including lions, tigers, an orangutan and live dodo birds. His bureau of interests incorporated a bewildering cluster of human and regular relics organized by genre. All through his life, Rudolf switched back and forth between episodes of rapture and despair. As a ruler, he would pull out from court for weeks in a row, or talk in an imperceptible voice. He generously supported the astronomers Johannes Kepler and Tycho Brahe laying the groundwork for the scientific revolution. Blessed and cursed with, as one historian put it, a readiness to accept nearly everything, Rudolf was an enthusiastic supporter of celestial prophets, chemists and alchemists of every stripe. Ludwig II of Bavaria Ludwig II was a typical mad king 
who may not have been mad at all. He was an opera lover, a dream place builder, a spendthrift, a deposed monarch and probably a murder victim. Today, Ludwig is best known for building Neuschwanstein, a fairy tale palace on a Bavarian hilltop that he ordered built. He was an enthusiastic supporter of the arts. On climbing the Bavarian lofty position at 18 years, immediately called his legend the writer Richard Wagner for an extensive crowd. Ludwig provided Wagner with funding to work on some of the most well-known operas of the time, making him one of his main patrons. However, Ludwig's construction of the castle led to an increase in his debt. And in 1886, a group of conspirators filed a medical report that declared the king permanently unfit to rule. The report was written by doctors who had never examined Ludwig. One of Ludwig's most famous statements, I wish to remain an eternal enigma to myself and others, is supported by the fact that the following morning, he and his physician were discovered floating dead in a Bavarian lake under mysterious circumstances. Rasputin Although a great deal of Grigory Rasputin's life is shrouded in myth, history portrays him as a mad monk who led Russia into chaos. Rasputin was known for preaching a religious doctrine that argued that true salvation was only possible through sinning. He began his career as a populist holy man. He was eventually summoned to the court of Tsar Nicholas II due to his reputation as a faith healer. There, he gained favor with Tsarina Alexandra Fyodorovna after helping her hemophiliac son recover from an injury. Rasputin had established himself as the Tsarina's most trusted advisor by 1911. After that, he started using his power to appoint corrupt and incompetent officials while also drinking and having inappropriate sexual desires. According to reports, Rasputin took pleasure in humiliating high society women by making them lick his filthy fingers after dipping them in soup. He had the charm of a conman. Even though he advised the Tsarina on state policy during the day, he was known to date prostitutes at night and was accused of raping a nun. In 1916, a group of aristocratic conspirators poisoned him with cyanide in the belief that the wild-eyed sorcerer was leading Russia towards disaster. The man reportedly shot him multiple times, beat him and then dumped his body into the freezing Neva River after toxins failed to work as intended. Rasputin's passing, at last, came beyond any good time to save the regal family from public shame. During the Bolshevik Revolution, the Tsar, Tsarina and their five children were all murdered in 1918. And this concludes our list of the filthy secrets of powerful rulers in history. Do let us know what you think about these leaders and their terrible deeds in the comment section below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel for more amazing content. You can also check out other amazing and interesting videos on our channel. See you in the next video. Thanks for listening.